Hi there guys. Um, I've got a very special unboxing today. What's in this box will be going in here. And it's a, a water scorpion. So this is the first time I've owned a water scorpion. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I have a thermostat and a filter coming for it. Because I want a filter that doesn't create circulation in the water. Um, they'll be arriving maybe tomorrow. It's not super important because the water scorpion has basically breathing apparatus through its tail um, and it will stick its tail out the top of the water and breathe the normal air anyway so it's not super important that the water is absolutely clean. Um, the only thing really in this water anyway is, is a bit of gravel and that's made it look a wee bit cloudy but it's fine other than that. And yeah, um, a heater to sort of keep it as well. Um, I was told keep them like you would keep tropical fish basically. So a heater to keep it about 21, 22 degrees should be fine for it. Um, at the minute the water is slightly warm, it's like lukewarm, it's not too warm, it's not too cold. So with that having been said, I'm really really looking forward to unboxing this. So let's see what we've got. I'm not 100% sure of the species, I think there's about 146, 47 different species of uh, water scorpions, maybe more. And all I really got was this was a Napa species, which I'm not 100% sure exactly what it is. And it was hard to come across uh, information on this specific species. And it's probably going to be an ongoing thing where I'm trying to thoroughly identify it. But for the meantime, Let's see what we have. So water scorpions are like spiders ambush predators. So this Malaysian water scorpion, I'm not sure if you can see there, just in the corner. And these guys are capable of flying as well, so it's important to have something with a lid on it. And, um, wow, <laughs> that's very cool. That is very cool. So, um, I made sure to get something with a good secure lid on it. There's a lot of aquariums out there with big holes in them and various bits and pieces. And I just wanted something that he couldn't escape from, really. So this one, this one will suit well. Um, piece of driftwood in it, and little things to hide in around and under. So let's see. Hope I don't startle him too much. And these guys can give you a nasty little nip as well. So. Well, we won't need that box anymore anyway. And there he is. You can see his little attack claws and that's his little beak there, his proboscis that he um, injects a neurotoxin into his prey to, to paralyze. And that's his little tail end there where he breathes from. So let's see if we can just get him in here. So I know in the wild they um they look like dead leaves and they'll often just hang in the water. <laughs> oh, he's hooked himself into the moss here, he doesn't want to come out. to hurt him. Let's see, can I 
get you off the moss, buddy. I know, I know. You're going into water now. There we go. So, there he is. And they'll normally just lie inside ponds or large puddles and they're just ambush predators really so um, specifically adapted eyes for the ability to see underwater and as you can see he's got a bit of driftwood there, a wee rock some gravel and bits and pieces died in behind and around so he should be at home in there and I might just maybe see if he's interested in something to eat. Although maybe not. He might he might just uh, turn it down, but we'll see anyway. Seems to want go buddy. There you go. He has it in his arms, but he doesn't seem to <laughs> be eating at it just yet. Oh, there we go. Out of focus. There's the proboscis injecting its neurotoxin into the morio worm. And it'll do pretty much the same job as a tarantula. There's his tail up out of the water. That's how he breathes. And yeah. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, thanks to the guys at So Many Legs. Um, it's, it's a really, really great invertebrate. And I'm very, very glad to have it in my collection. So guys, thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll keep you updated on them later.